Hi everyone, Talia here and I will be talking about my top 10 anime of 2015. Before I start, I'm gonna tell you the rules about this list and how it is going to go. So these will be 10 anime that I enjoyed the most in 2015. They will not be in order, they will just be 10 shows that I enjoyed a lot and there won't be sequels, no season 3s, no movies, no specials, no OVAs, all of that. That won't be in this list. It will only be series that started and ended in the year of 2015. So that's clear now. I will be mentioning honorable mentions though at the end which can conclude season 2s and all of that and there might be spoilers as well when I'm talking about season 2s obviously so if that happens, I will warn you on time so you don't get sprawled. So let's get on with the list and I will start with Akatsuki Uyona. So this one was definitely one of my favorites from last year because of the shoujo tag and the romance going on in there and the characters because the characters were really awesome and I loved all of the dragons and just the story itself as well. It felt kind of like a adventurous fairy tale something like that and I really enjoyed that the main character Yona is a badass female that we don't see too much in anime nowadays so that was something that I really really enjoyed as well I would definitely recommend it to people who like shoujo and a bit of adventure as well there are fights going on in this series and it is pretty entertaining and a badass female I mean that's, that's just awesome. The next anime that I want to mention is called Nanatsu no Taizai and this one actually ended in 2015. It didn't start in 2015 but it ended in winter I think. I'm not too sure but this one I mean I'm, I'm already a pretty big fan of the manga as you can tell so this is Seven Deadly Sins and it is really good and when I saw oh god <laughs> okay when I saw that they would make an anime out of it I got really really excited and I watched it and I was still excited and I really enjoyed it and this is your not typical but it's some kind of shonen anime that is just really enjoyable and feels fresh as well so I like that um, other people compare it to fairy tale though and some characters uh, they compare it to characters in Naruto but I haven't seen both of those so I guess that is why it felt fresh to me and um, probably because of that I yeah pretty sure it's because of that but <laughs> I liked it a lot it was really enjoyable I can't wait for season two because that is actually happening so that got me even more excited and yeah all I have to say is Ban best boy and Diane best girl so how the series ended though was kind of like it's, it wasn't a letdown but it was just like okay we need a season two so that is also why I'm really glad we're gonna have a season two so yeah Nanatsu no Taizai definitely gets a spot in my top 10 because it was just so much fun to watch and the characters were awesome next up is Auharu Ikuski Kanju so this one I I'm pretty sure I mentioned this to a lot of people before that this is definitely one of my favorites of 2015 because it also felt new this one especially because it was about a girl who is dressed like a guy and she is mistaken for being a guy and that is what made the whole story kind of interesting although they didn't get into that too much in in the series i i wasn't bothered by it and i enjoyed it so much it was such a fun series because it's also about these group of guys well with her in it uh, playing with bb guns <laughs> so that, that was just entertaining and it kind of felt like a sports series at times which was really cool for me because I really like how they worked together and how they connected to each other and how they got to know each other all of that stuff that is something that I really enjoyed from this series the characters are just so lovable there's no way that you can hate anyone in this series unless he's from the rival team of course but still when they're from the rivals I still really enjoyed those characters and I didn't really hate them and the comedy in this series was so damn good I really really liked it and as I have mentioned before Toru Yukimura is best boy of 2015 and he is in this series and he's just wonderful he's special I will just say that and 
that's definitely one of the big points why I enjoyed the series the most. Now, how can I go on with this list without mentioning Death Parade? I mean, Death Parade was such a good series. It was so mysterious and it had a lot of feels and, oh, oh, Madhouse did such a good job on this series. It was so much fun to watch and it ended good as well. I'm so satisfied with how it ended and how everything went. It was beautiful. That's all I can say. It's really, it's so beautiful. It makes you think about life. This series is really like, it, it could get you down sometimes because it's, it's sad in a lot of moments, but how they portray it is really perfect. So, uh, this series, if you want to have some feels, if you want to be, to think about serious stuff, I, I guess you could say, um, watch Death Parade because it is about dying and what your last moments are and how your life was and all of that stuff. And it is just very interesting to see all of those different characters that we had in the series that I didn't expect we would see. So it was, it was a big ride, this one. I really loved it. And I, I kind of, I kind of want it. I want it really badly, so <laughs> watch Death Parade. Another shoujo anime that I really enjoyed is called Akagami no Shirayuki Hime, and it has a second season going on right now, and I can't be more excited for this one because this was also one of those shoujo anime that felt fresh and new, and it's also, this one has a more fairy tale feeling than uh, Akatsuki no Yona, but this one, oh, I don't know, it reminded me of Disney movies <laughs> from the past with some romance in it and good friendship and good chemistry uh, between the characters and just a really good story as well. It's a really fun show to watch. It will give you feels as well and you root for the two main characters so much. They are so perfect for each other and it just made me happy whenever I watched the series. It just made me really, really happy to see them connect and grow more towards each other and all of that. It was just, it was beautiful to see. And I can't wait for the second season, so I'm really excited. If you haven't seen Snow White with the Red Hair yet, go check it out if you like shoujo and like a fairy tale kind of shoujo, I would say. Uh, it's, it's really good and the girl is also pretty badass, so yeah go watch it. Another memorable anime that aired this year is Food Wars or Shokugeki no Soma. This one was super special, I would say. I never thought I would like this anime because I don't like fan service and this show is full of it. So that really, really surprised me because I watched the first few episodes of this one and I wasn't sure if I would keep up with it. And as I watched more and more, I just got more entertained and it was fun and it was, it was, I don't know, oh, I can't really, it was really exciting. I can say that because there's like battles going on with them making food and the food looks so damn good. Oh man, I wanted to eat every time when I was watching the series, but this series was a really cool experience for me because like I said, fan service isn't my thing, but how they pull it off in this series is done really well because, okay, they exaggerate a lot with it, but I don't mind for this series. Why exactly? I'm not too sure yet because somehow in my mind it doesn't make sense that I like this series that much, but it was just so funny. I think it was a comedy that made up for it and just uh, all of the characters being interesting that I just, I just like this series so much. And also, there's gonna be a second season of this one. I've heard, um, not sure if it's confirmed yet, but I would love to see a second season of this one because it was just, it was nice to see and they could do so much more with the series. So next up is probably one of the only series that really, really surprised me this year. And that is Star Mew or High School Star Musical. This is a Bishonen uh, show with guys singing. It's kind of, it's not like a musical because that is Dance with Devils and we're not going to talk about that. But uh, this had a lot of songs and it was uh, five boys just being in a school, learning about music, singing, um, working together in a group, all of that stuff. And it was just a really fun, enjoyable and relaxing show, I could say, because this was a short one. Uh, was 12 or 13 episodes, I think, and 
I wish there was more. I really, really wish there was more because this was so, so much fun. I laughed my ass off with a lot of episodes and I didn't expect that at all. When I saw the cover of this show, I thought it would be boring because it kind of looked like, oh, it's just these five guys. I don't know if it will be worth watching it. But then I started it and I got to know the characters and it got it got so much better every time. And funny, god damn it, the, the comedy really surprised me in this one because my fa one of my favorite characters, uh, Tengenshi Kakeru, is just amazing and he likes cats and it's just like, I was like, wow, they made like the ideal guy for me in this series, this is crazy. But yeah, um, enough talking about guys or, you know, be shown it, but uh, just the characters themselves were really entertaining. And there was a little bit of story in this show, but nothing too big, which was okay for me because they focused on the characters a lot for their development and explaining how they are and how they connect later over time as well. And that was just really nice to see because I really liked their friendship at the end of the series and it kind of almost made me cry because I had to say goodbye to all of them. But yeah, kind of hoping we will have a second season of Star Mew. That would be really cool, but I think it's pretty underrated now, so I'm not sure if that's gonna happen, but we can only hope. Of course, this year was the year of One Punch Man, so obviously I'm gonna talk about that because I've always been a fan of the manga and how they did the anime was just perfect, Madhouse. This was the year of Madhouse, honestly, because they did such a good job with a lot of shows. And One Punch Man is one of them, and it looked incredible. It sounded awesome as well. And how they did it from manga to anime was perfect as well. I have no complaints at all for that series. It was so much fun. I would say it is a little bit overrated though because people said it was like the number one of all time and all of that stuff. I don't think it's that that good but it was super entertaining and definitely one of my top threes from this year. Um, but because I read the manga already I knew what to expect but I didn't think that much people would like this series so I'm pretty surprised about that to be honest. But yeah, One Punch Man was amazing. I can't really say much about it. Um, I'm hoping for a second season, but it's Madhouse, so we don't know if that's going to happen. But since it is that popular now, I think they will have one. It would be stupid if they wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this finally got an anime and it is so funny. The comedy is amazing. I like the characters as well. So yeah, I think a lot of people agree. <laughs> on that. So that is One Punch Man. Then the next show is also a romance show that was, uh, it was special in a way and it was different from other shoujo romance anime. And this one is called Ori Monogatari, of course. This one was special because the characters were very different from each other and we don't usually see that. We had this buff guy who was really tall and this girl who is really small. Like if I can compare it to something, I would say lovely complex, but that is just because the girl was taller than the guy. But this was just very different. I really liked Orimonogatari because it was such a sweet and cute story and Oh, I loved, I loved all of the colors and how they did the anime itself. It looked really good and just, it was cute. It was cuteness overload. That is what this whole series is. And they had a little bit of drama in this because, you know, they usually have that in shoujo anime or romance anime. And it wasn't over the top. I was glad about that. It fitted in there, but, um, I have to say, like, some characters that got into the series weren't my favorite or were a bit too much but still I enjoyed the series so much it was just so sweet and oh the comedy as well the comedy was great I loved how the two main characters connected and just like coming out about stuff like uh if you just simply want to like hold hands or kiss or something like that yeah that's just all of the sweet stuff that happened and I will definitely give this a watch if you like shoujo and romance anime because it's just so cute, so cute. And the last one I will be talking about is Arslan Senki. Of course, I cannot forget Arslan Senki. That was definitely one of my favorites as well because how it looked reminded me so much of Fullmetal Alchemist. Well, for a reason, obviously. Everyone knows that, but 
it was it was just especially the ending that surprised me of Arthon Senki and I can't wait for season two but this series just surprised me because at first it's like oh it's a adventurous anime kind of has like a shonen feel but it's it's kind of new because it's like all these wars going on as well and this young prince trying to grow up and it's just it's interesting uh the characters are really nice in this one and i can't say it enough but i really really like the drawings of the girl who did uh, a alchemist i can't i can't because I, I don't know it's probably because Fullmetal alchemist is one of my favorite shows ever and seeing Arslan I was just very proud although the story isn't hers the drawings are hers so it looks really good and I'm just kind of proud I guess I do have to say sometimes it goes kind of slow but they have to do that because there's a lot of explaining to do in this show when it comes to the war and uh you know all of the villains and all of that stuff you know they have to explain everything because there's a lot going on in this show so I'm just gonna warn you about that there's a lot of dialogue uh, talking about uh, strategies and all of that stuff. Arson Senki is definitely one that I enjoy the most of 2015 and it's just it's quite the ride and I would recommend you to marathon it since like I said there's a lot going on so if you want to catch up on it week by week it was kind of hard sometimes to follow up so yeah I would definitely recommend you kind of marathoning it so yeah that is it for my 10 anime that I enjoyed the most and it was just it was a good year honestly because when I look at this list those shows were really good I enjoyed those so much and there's a reason why I can't put them into a top 10 list um, from 1 to 10 because there's a lot of shows that are kind of similar and then there's shows that are really different from each other so and it also depends on what kind of mood I'm in if I'm watching a show so for me it's really difficult to make like a top 10. So on to honorable mentions I will be mentioning second seasons or third seasons or just some that didn't make the list but that I really liked as well. So first I want to say my favorite second season from this whole thing this whole year <laughs> was noragami and noragami oh man it surprised me so much because the second season was almost better than the first season i mean it's definitely the same and even not better because i still can't i need to rewatch it honestly because i have noragami on dvd and i remember having so much feels and loving the series so much and then when i saw the second season oh man i had so much more feels than the first uh, season also because we know how the characters are now but they still develop and when they do it kind of surprises you as well and it was really nice to see all of the characters getting along and how they change and how how they become stronger so it uh, i don't have any words for <laughs> the second season of noragami it was just so damn good i will make a review on this one uh, I swear because I feel like it is kind of underrated not too much though because a lot of people know Noragami but I feel like people don't take Noragami too seriously which I can understand if you have a guy in a tracksuit all the time with just like gorgeous blue eyes <laughs> so that's probably like the only thing they see from Noragami and like the funny bits on Tumblr so I can see why people would not take this one very seriously but if you watch it, it is so good. So people who haven't seen the first season, please watch it. It's so good. It it's oh, it's so good. We also had Kuroko season three in two thousand fifteen, which was amazing. But I'm just kind of sad that it ended because it was so good, and I really miss the characters, and I kind of really want to see Kuroko again, and all of all of the cool guys, and I oh, I really miss the connection between all of the guys. It was so much fun to watch and I want to rewatch it it's that good oh uh, the feels it was a really really good finale and I didn't think that I would be touched by it so much but I was and it was surprising in a way as well because I didn't read the manga so I didn't know what would happen at all so the ending was for me perfect I really loved it we had season two of Kamisama Kiss this year as well which was so lovely oh Kamisama Kiss is definitely one of my favorite anime it is just so funny and cute and it has 
the nice romance in it as well who and it's also like the kind of romance that isn't afraid to show it like kissing and all of that stuff like i like it that there aren't like a lot of shy moments because sometimes when you have shoujo romance shows and just characters being like really shy it can annoy me sometimes because i've seen it so many times before and you don't have that with kamisama kiss so i'm really glad about that and i've been watching like the first rewatching the first season right now because i bought the dvd and it just reminded me that the second season was so good as well and i'm not gonna say it's better than the first season but it was really entertaining and we had a lot of new characters that were fun to watch and they had some interesting arcs in there so kamisama kiss is a really nice shoujo romance anime and it has you know it has some fantasy in there as well which is nice and then last but not least we have fate stay night unlimited blade wars i almost forgot that this aired in 2015 because uh i don't know why because it's been a while i guess but it was really good like i really enjoyed it i like all of the fate series that i've seen so far i haven't seen all of them yet but this one was really nice and for me it's definitely better than uh the normal like original fate stay night not just because of the animation and all of that stuff i just like the story a bit more in unlimited blade works so yeah it looked amazing though i can't like i can't say that isn't true because it looked super amazing it was it was so good but yeah i think that one is definitely worth mentioning because it was a, a really nice one and i love the fate series so yeah if you like fate zero or fate c9 or whatever go check out unlimited blade works they have some episodes that are like an hour long though and there's like a prologue and all of that stuff but i thought that was really interesting so i enjoyed that a lot so i do really recommend that one and that is it for my list of 2015 i hope you enjoyed this video let me know your favorites in the comments below and yeah i ended up not spoiling anything so i guess that's good yay <laughs> if you like this video you can give it a thumbs up or share or whatever you want to do with it and i will see you soon thank you for watching bye